In this video, we're gonna be unboxing the 13 inch MacBook Air. This is the MacBook Air, and this is actually the refurbished model. So let's flip it around. I covered up all the like serial numbers, but let's see what is inside. This is the sky blue color. So it's like the closest you're gonna to get to previously what silver was in the new color. And looks pretty good. The MacBook Air has a headphone jack and it has a MagSafe power adapter and it also has two USB-C ports. When you compare it to the 14 inch MacBook Pro, you'll see it's like significantly thinner and it does weigh a good bit less. And then obviously it's a 13 inch versus a 14 inch, but the footprint is like actually pretty similar. It's not that much smaller. But anyway, you're here for the MacBook Air, so let's open it up and see all about it. Also in the box, you get the MagSafe power cable, you get some nice paperwork, and you get this power adapter, which is the 35 watt power adapter, and it is kind of a new design. You actually get two USB-C imports, which is really nice. I wasn't expecting that. And you do get this like little travel flippy plug mechanism here. I don't know when they changed this, but we did not get any stickers. So if you are expecting little Apple stickers to come with your MacBook Air, at least in the refurbished version, uh, not this year. Now let's put this box away, store it on a shelf, and never look at it for several years. How could I forget? Ta-da. I will be setting it up with a existing MacBook Air. So this is the M1, I think the 2020 version. And then this is the 2025 M4 version. So I will be setting this computer up onto this computer. But this is also a really good opportunity to show you like the actual physical differences between the old style M1 MacBook Air and then the also the new design, new style for the 2025 M4 version. The new style MacBook Air is like a little bit thicker, but when you come down to the actual back edge, they're like very similar. In terms of weight, they like feel pretty comparable. I don't know the exact stats. I don't have a data sheet in front of me, but they're like a similar weight. So you don't have to worry about the new style 13 inch MacBook Air being a lot heavier than the old style. I'm gonna be setting up the MacBook Air. So this is the old one, this is the new one. So I'm gonna do transfer data from MacBook. I do not need any accessibility. And the next page is gonna be Wi-Fi. I'm gonna skip over that. Okay. It connected. It actually took a little bit longer to connect than I would have expected, but Wi-Fi is connected. I can continue through this data in privacy. And now I'm gonna go through the process of transferring the Mac data from this computer to this computer. The easiest way that I'm gonna be doing this is by using the migration assistant from the old computer and then setting up the data on the new computer. So what you do is you open up migration assistant, it's gonna close all your programs. And then the option you want how do you want to transfer your information? You want to choose to another Mac. So then you hit continue. And then I have to connect it to power, so I will be right back. Once it's plugged in and the migration assistant starts, you're actually going to see the like old MacBook Air that you want to transfer the data to directly on here. So then you hit continue. And then you have to make sure that these numbers match up. And then you hit continue from this side. And then it looks like it is looking for all the applications and data to transfer. You can specifically toggle the different like folders and other system files that you want when you're transferring the Mac. For me, I'm gonna do everything, but if for some reason you didn't want like specific parts of your system, you can kind of choose which ones. I think it's like probably best to do all of them in my opinion. You do still have to manually set a password, so it's up to you to pick a new one, or if you want, you could also use the same password, but you still have to explicitly set it. And now that you have your password set, you hit continue. You can read all the terms on your own time. Agree, sure. And then now the transferring process is starting up. This might take a while, so it's a good idea to plug in your new MacBook Air during the transfer process. And in my opinion, I really think the biggest improvement aside from like it being a new and faster computer is actually that it does have the MagSafe it's like a huge quality of life improvement when the old MacBook Air only had the USB-C charger. A little update on the timing. It's been kind of like stuck at five, six minutes for like probably five or six minutes. When it's done, both uh, MacBooks will give you like a dialogue and you have to accept done on both of them. And then once it is done, you have to sign in with your Apple ID on your new laptop. 
The next step in this process is gonna be the file disk encryption. It basically encrypts the file disk and also there's a checkbox to allow your Apple account to unlock the disk. So it like gives you a little bit of added security there. And then it's gonna ask you to set up your touch ID. Uh, I found that it's actually a really good idea to set up like a finger on your right hand and a finger on your left hand because sometimes depending on if you have something in your hand, it's really nice to be able to unlock your computer with both hands. Once you get everything else set up in the prompts that it gives you, you get this welcome to Mac screen and then you are good to go and you can start using your MacBook. So a few things when you're setting up your new MacBook, this applies to MacBook Airs, MacBook Pros, really, I guess, all of the different like MacBooks that exist or Apple computers. So when you buy a new MacBook, you have the choice when you purchase to get uh, Apple Care. But at least in this one, I have 56 days to add coverage for Apple Care, like accidental damage and things like that. So you don't necessarily always have to make the decision like at the time when you buy it, you can like follow up and do it later, which is totally fine. Um, at least now, very current to like November 2025, you have the choice to upgrade to Tahoe or continue to roll with migration and regular scheduled updates to Sequoia. So up to you if you want Tahoe. Me personally, I am not upgrading to Tahoe. I'm going to keep going with Sequoia until I can't any longer for various design and like bug fixing decisions. So keep that in mind. Also, Apple does provide a limited warranty and it looks like it expires in a like full year from the purchase date. So for me, it expires in November 20th, 2026. And that covers hardware service and chat and phone support for, I guess, like critical issues that would normally be like factory defects. So it's nice that it has like a extended warranty outside of AppleCare that you might want to get also. And you probably already know this, but the storage that you signed up for isn't necessarily always the storage that you get. So for this specific use case for this computer, since files are migrated, I only have uh, 784 gigs uh, available because I did get a one terabyte storage system, which is like part of the reason why I decided to upgrade. And it looks like the system is using 77 gigs. So if you have a 256 gig MacBook Air or MacBook Pro, um, keep in mind that like a big portion of that is probably going to be system data. So keep that in mind with the uh, storage options that you want to choose. But anyway, hope you found this review and unboxing and setup process of the MacBook Air somewhat helpful. And thanks for watching.